it's kind of cool. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. I really got into that album right from the get-go. And my uh, my boss from We Love Metal just sent it over and said, I think you might like this one. And, boy, he was right because I haven't uh, – I haven't given a 10 out of 10 to any new material since I joined that uh, this website, but I just dug it right from the get-go. The story, the music, just, yeah, it was, I, I'm, I'm a big fan, obviously, of it. Wow, that's, that, that's excellent, man. You know, I, just, I really appreciate it. No problem. Well, can I ask you some questions? Uh, I kind of thought about maybe doing this, ask some questions to uh, of you, before we get to omniscient and then ask some questions that are real specific to omniscient. Is that all right? Sure, I really want to work it. Okay, great. Yeah, I think, I don't know, maybe we'll see how that goes, but I have so many questions about omniscient that are very detailed, but I have some other questions because I just, you know, kind of doing some research and things like that. You've been in, you've been in music since what, like 1984, 85, 86? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been, um, I mean, ever since uh, I think I was like 15 when I played my first professional gig, um, and, and I guess that was, and I can't remember. I guess that was like 1976 or something like that. So I've been I've been kind of like a musician for quite a long time now. So what got you into it? What what were the albums or the songs or was there a concert or you know? Because all of us that are in metal, we have that something that just said, oh, I'm, this is it for me. What was it for you? Um, man, there's like a, there's a couple of things like I could point to. I mean, the first thing is uh, I bought this album by Queen called Sheer Heart Attack. And, um, and that just blew me away. And it's like, you know, like there was like there's just this, this guitar orchestration where it's like Brian May would play like like six or seven different guitar parts on an album and they all kind of like harmonized and were blind in and out with each other and I, I just thought that was so cool, man, you know. I, I, and then after that I went to see Kiss for my first concert yeah. and that was like 1976 and that just blew me away, man. I'd never seen anything that crazy. Yeah, Gene Simmons spitting blood <laughs> on fire and He's freely a guitar, the pickup starts smoking because he's playing such a hot solo. And, you know, it's just like Colin the Fire coming out the side of the stage. And, and the other thing was when I heard the solo to Highway Star by uh, Deep Purple, I just said, man, I, I have to learn to play lead guitar. <laughs> and those, those are like the things I think I remember the most. I, I there's got to be millions of fans, literally, and, and musicians as well. That Kiss was kind of the gateway for so many. Well, they're just, you know, Priest as well, Sabbath, of course. But that's what I hear yeah. over and over from people. Is I, I got a, my first album was a Kiss album and things like that. So, boy, the the work they've put in to open up doors for everyone else has just been incredible. Yeah, yeah, Kiss was Kiss was like a gateway drug, you know. <laughs> Absolutely right. Well, you, yeah. you've been with Steel Profit for so long. What To younger musicians, what would you say to them about what does it take to withstand years and years in such a difficult industry? Um, you know, you really just need to be passionate about music itself. You know, it has to be something that like just excites you so much that you can't bear to be without it, you know? Mm. Um, I mean, I think that's really it. It's like some people, they get into it and they're interested in it for a little while and then when they see that they're, it's going to be really hard to meet their goals and, you know, what they wanted out of it, um, they can give it up because they didn't feel it it was all that important. It wasn't something they were like so passionate about, but for um, me and I know other people like me, it's like, it's just so important to you that you can't, even though you know it's a shitty industry and you should just 
turn your back on it and you should just forget about it and do your own thing. You can't help it because music is just so good, you know? Oh, that's yeah, that's fantastic. And, and that, that's what keeps keeps you in it. And if, if that's how, like, a younger musician feels about it, then he's going to stay with it his whole life. And if, you, if a person really doesn't feel it like that, if um, if things don't go right for them, they're probably gonna gonna jump out of it and forget about it, you know. No, that makes sense. I think I think anyone that's been successful in probably most endeavors have had. If you don't have passion, you're kind of dead in life anyway. So, you know, that's that's good advice. Um, I was I was listening to some of your older stuff too, and I I love Fahrenheit 451, and obviously you have a a love for it too. Do you have a big literary background? Um, I, I'm not sure how you mean that. Like, uh, I just, do you mean like, well, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I just, no, I just, that, that book is so fantastic. And it seems like you're so, you're so talented at writing themes and concepts where instead of just songs and just, it seems like stories make sense to you. So I just didn't know if, and you know, like you know, I look thinking back about when uh, you know, thinking about Montag and things like that, and, and Fahrenheit four fifty one and dark hallucinations and all that. It just uh, why does it do this? That's all right. I guess we're back on here. I guess what I was asking, uh, I guess I probably should introduce you. This is Scott from We Love Metal. I'm talking with Steve. Is Kaczynski the right way to say it? Yes, sir. Okay. From Steel Prof. And we're just, we've been talking about a lot of things already, but um, I was just thinking about how how adept you are at telling stories. I didn't know, are you a big reader? Have, are you, have you always been into you know, the more of the thematical things when you write your music? Yeah, yeah, I am. I, I was a huge reader when I was a kid. You know, I read tons of, like, science fiction and comic books and, uh, you know, all the books that, you know, they make you read, like, in school and high school and stuff like that. And I was also a pretty good writer. I was, you know, like, I could write essays really easily and I... I like to write fiction and stuff. When I was when I was in high school, I had some English teachers that tried to push me along that way and help me out. And um, and uh, I actually used to do some journalism too. For uh, like when I I was younger, um, I used to write for like a little uh, rock and roll newspaper back in Connecticut. And um, yeah, I. I I would uh, write like the heavy metal reviews and concert reviews and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I've always, I've always been into stories and how to, how people tell stories and like what the theme of the story is and what the what the meaning is is always the most important thing to me. You know what they're they're trying to communicate. Like sometimes it's not so important. The elements of the story and, and stuff, but more like what the author's trying to get across, what his main point is, mm -hmm. it matters to me. That's that's great to hear. You. I'm a I teach English, and you know I do this for uh, for fun. I write for fun, kind of like well you did. You know you've already had my job, so it's neat. I was uh, actually teaching Fahrenheit 451 a few years ago, and I was trying to find some visual and to give the kids that it was just beyond what I had. And I found the Montag, Montag value video, and I had no idea at the time who I was listening to. It was just, it, uh -huh. kind, of, it kind of blew me away because I just went back a few nights ago. I'm like, oh, my gosh, how things come full circle. What a tremendous story that is. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, it was really neat. When you have, uh, when you have your own time, what, what do you listen to? What do you listen to the most, current music, old music, a mix of things? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I listen to um, 
I listen to like probably old music more than anything, um, and I, you know, like I, I kind of like uh, keep going back further and further in time. Like so now I like to like Beethoven, you know. But uh, it's I don't know. It's like I just kind of like I don't care about what's current and what's what's going on. All I care about is like quality music uh-huh. and. You know, I, I found that in so many different eras, and um, and that's that's all. It's like I like really good music, and I don't care if it was made this year or five hundred years ago. It's like that's my only criteria is that it's really good, not just like okay or or average. You know, I like something that's really good. Gotcha. Yeah, when you said you went back, I thought you were going to reference like Diamond Head or something, and you went all the way back to Beethoven. So you really, <laughs> you really took it back. Yeah, I mean, I, I started going like backwards, and you know, like like just like in the seventies, and then I started going back into the sixties, and then the fifties, and the forties, and the thirties. You know, like jazz and stuff like that, and then um, you know, it's like. Uh, I don't know, it's like music, I mean, people knew how to play music and do really amazing things with music hundreds of years ago. It's not like it's it's something you have to be, like, living today, and you have to be modern and hip and know all about technology to make awesome music. I mean, people figured out the rules and ways to make awesome music, like, such a long time ago, and it really hasn't changed to this day, you know, to really make great music, it still follows a lot of the same principles, you know? That's neat. That, that kind of makes me think about, does that have anything to do with when you wrote uh, Funeral for Art, Funeral of Art for uh, Off of Omniscient? Yeah, a little bit, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of like, some, you know, like, like with that song, it's like, for me, like, with art, means is like people they already have these emotions and they use art as like a medium to ex- for the emotions to come out of them you know like like they it's not so much that the emotions are already present in the music I don't think I think it's just like you make it into what you want it to be so if you want to feel sad from this music or if you want to feel happy from this music or some other kind of emotion, anger, whatever, some kind of thing. I think you, you're capable of doing that on your own, but you use the music and art, you use it as like an amplifier for for these feelings that you want to feel, you know? Oh, that's well said. I like that, an amplifier for your emotions. When you, well, So for you, when you're angry or whatever, your amplifier, who is like your amplifier? Is there certain bands where you're like, I'm just going to, go to the weight room and just bash something out or I'm going to, I got to hear some angry. What's, what's an angry band you like? The angry. Wow. Let's see. Um, it's, it's probably going to be like punk rock or something like that. You know, it might be, um, you know, I don't know, the adolescents or sex pistols or, uh, something like that. I mean, the, um, you know, like a lot of the growler stuff. I mean, I used to really like Napalm Death, but um, I don't listen to a lot of growling music anymore. But that's, I think that's pretty good for for anger. You know, it's like it sounds so hostile. <laughs> that's for sure. So if it's a per- yeah. so if it's a if it's a perfect night, you had one night, and you guys are on stage. What other two or three bands would be on the bill with you for one night? I mean, for sure, it's going to be Led Zeppelin and Queen, and probably Black Sabbath, you know, with Ozzy. That would be a show. I don't love Dio, too. I mean, Dio is, like, uh, amazing, but, yeah, I guess those would be the three bands. I'd pay a lot for that ticket. <laughs> yeah, right. Mean, <laughs> you know, speaking of Dio, did, didn't you guys cover, uh, was it Neon Knights? Yeah, we, we covered Neon Knights um, 
and uh, a, a tribute to Ryan James Dio. I think it was called Holy Dio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that back in 2008? I, I think I was. I was listening to that a few nights ago. What What made you pick that song? Um, she. It was. It was like with Dio. It's like I've been a fan of his since Elf. So. There was Elf, there was Rainbow, there was Black Sabbath, and there was Dio. And I was like, it ain't easy picking a song, because he's got, like, hundreds of great songs, it seems, you know, from sure. all the different eras he's done. But um, I remember just when I bought that out from Heaven and Hell, and I put that on the turntable, and when I heard that song, I was just like, blown. And I was just like, whoa. Because I, I knew Dio from Rainbow. I loved 